Turkish Airlines Europe. I feel devotion. Bennett Cantu welcomed Barcelona in the game of the week. Whose fate was decided in the penultimate round of the top 16. Nenad Kerstic making a high art of the low post. Rocco Ukic floats like a butterfly, stings like a bee. The week's standout players, amazing plays. Bennett Cantu hosted Regal Barcelona FC at the Paladesi on Thursday night in a crucial Group H game in the top 16. The Spanish team could count on the best defensive system in the entire tournament, and coach Trinquieri was looking for a perfect offensive game plan. They put together very physical big guys and very physical small guys. So uh, the players against them see the floor very small. We have to find a way to make the, the, the floor big, moving them a lot in the game from one side to the other of the offense. Despite being the only undefeated team in this phase of the tournament, Barca knew it was going to be tough. Cantu is an awkward team to play. The players are very experienced and at home they put us in great difficulty because they offer something more. Also on their own court, they've beaten practically all of their rivals except Fernabache. They play an extraordinary game of basketball, one of the best in Europe, being honest. Crowded Paladesio welcomed the teams for the tip-off. The battle stayed close until the visitors took a small lead thanks to a 6-0 run started by Perovic. But Cantu answered soon with a 9-2 partial completed by Perkins, almost at the first buzzer. With a spectacular dunk by Vasquez and the effort of Erezen Lorbeck, Barcelona began to find his rhythm. Basile started the second half punishing the Spanish defense from 8 meters and Cantu tried to fly away with Brunner. In a thrilling finale, Boniface and Dong gave a great contribution to the visitors and they took a small margin with a 9-0 partial. With 4.93 seconds left to play and Cantu down by one, Gianluca Basile had the chance to score and give his team the win, but the rim rejected his shot. Regal Barcelona took the road win 63-62 and secured first place with a game to go. With one game left in top 16 Group E, two places have already been decided. Cesca Moscow in first place, through to the Euroleague playoffs. And Anadolu Efes in fourth place, eliminated from the competition. Cesca Moscow made sure of a playoffs place by stunning Olympiacos 96-64. With a great display of power at home after last week's first loss in the tournament at the hands of Galatasaray Medical Park. Cesca needed just the first half to pave the way to victory. 10 from 13 two-pointers, 11 from 12 from three-point range and the game was practically over. Galatasaray won the great Istanbul showdown at the Abdi Pekci, defeating Anadolu Efes 64-56 in front of a passionate crowd and grabbed the chance to play for the playoffs in the last Group E game next week. Mamuti's team led the entire game with strong defence and good offensive effort from Luksa Andric and Ender Arslan, both driving the team with fundamental plays. It was Arslan who sealed the win with a key 62-54 basket. Third place in total points scored, with almost 15 per game. Nenad Kirstic was born 29 years ago in Kraljevo, a small town in Serbia. At that time, it was normal to fall in love with the Serbian national team, then European and world champion. It was more than a passing infatuation, 
as the Seska Moscow center became national captain. Uh, when I started playing when I was 11 years old, and uh, I just play uh, for fun, you know. I was just with uh, in Serbia with my uh, friends from school, just playing sports. Back in that, those days, uh, we have a uh, national team is really doing great, and we have our heroes playing over there. Day by day, year after year, Nenad has become one of the strongest low post players in Euroleague, and not only because he adores that position. When I start playing basketball, when I was uh, realizing that I'm going to be a center. Uh, I really work on that game a lot and uh, you can see uh, the difference between uh, good centers and uh, you know bad that good centers they can play on a low post and more effective. And you're showing it at Seska. After scoring, a center plays better defense. Well, that's what a lot of people think. Is it always true, Nenad? Especially when you're younger. You're more hype, you know, and you, you just score the basket and you want to, you know, show on the other end that you, you're doing good. But uh, when you get older and older, you're just trying to play the same level and be consistent every, every single play. And now I'm trying to do that, but uh, when I was younger, definitely I tried to play better defense. And sometimes when you score and you get hype, sometimes you get stupid fouls, you know, so that comes from experience. Experience from playing with great teammates. Is there anybody you'd like to mention? I have, um, you know, Teodosic with me, who is really close friend. First of all, close, close friend to me, and also great player. And uh, we played together for almost uh, five five years with the national team. It's really we have a good relationship. At least on the floor, of course. Not only with him. Otherwise, nobody could explain your impressive march so far, both yours and the team's. MVP for December and for Week 9. MVP for Top 16 Week 3. Your scoring average, your stats are really astounding. I care about points. It's everybody who says don't care is lying. But uh, first of all, I always, I was always a player who cares first about winning, you know, and uh, be a part of winning team. A winning player in a winning team. What's better? Anyway, you've still to lift the Euroleague. Seven years ago, Seska lost one game before the Final Four. Exactly like you. Now the playoff. You need another big effort. It's been a great season so far, but uh, now in the in, in last three months of the season, you know the most important games are coming. So it's going to test our character and, uh, and uh, the team character also. Your character and your value are well known all over the world. Kerstis is very skilled, a skilled big guy and strong. He's the best big guy in Europe, I think. Nothing less. Good luck, big man. The real fascination of the competition is in the challenge. In Turkish Airlines Euroleague Top 16 Group F, the challenge is tough and balanced, with just one game to go. Geskra Bilbao grabbed a key 60-59 home win over Monte Pasqui Siena to put itself in a good position for the final challenge next week, when they face Unicaca Malaga. With six seconds left in the game, Bootsy Thornton found an easy basket in the paint, giving a 59-58 lead to the Italians. But a great buzzer beater jump shot from Raul Lopez gave the Basques the win, with no shortage of excitement on the court and in the crowd. In the other game of the group, Real Madrid put on a good performance against Unicaja Malaga, winning 86 65. Despite Unicaja Malaga's good start with a 14 0 run in the first half, Lasso's team tied the game at 41 approaching the end of the first half with a three-pointer from Nikola Mirotic. Early in the fourth quarter, Real took an important lead and never looked back, stunning Malaga with a 21-point margin and can now look forward to the next key game in Italy at Montepaschi. Everything is uncertain in Group F, with three teams who can still reach the Euroleague playoffs. With Unicaca Malaga eliminated, Montepaschi Siena four wins and one loss, Real Madrid and Guest Crab Bilbao, three wins and two losses each, are on track for two playoff spots. A 
great player is able to score on his own, but... Uh, I mean, a great point guard makes it easy for everyone. The point guard must be not only a good player for himself, something Damon Mallet knows very well. Just being a winner, just being able to make a difference, you know, being able to help your team win, no matter if it's, it's scoring points or making a, a big stop on defense, being a motivator, being a vocal leader, uh, you know, that's, that's what I want to be known for. You know, just a, a guy who, who, who's a good guy off the court as well, and a guy who's a, who's a good player on the court. Just as AC Law does too. Continue to, to, to be myself, I mean, that's, that's, that's all I know. I mean, as far as the way I'm playing the game, I'm having to, to tone it back a little bit as far as my aggressiveness, looking for my own shot, but the way I am, and I am my own person, I lead the team out there as the point guard, that's what I'm supposed to do, and it's the same anywhere I've ever been. And Oliver Lafayette. I just try to get in the game, just change the tempo of the game, play defense, and just try to make plays for others. Um, so we got a lot of guys that can shoot the basketball, so it works out good. Many teams changed their point guard just before the top 16 this year. Never an easy choice, even if for J.R. Bremer it wasn't so hard. The biggest adapt, the, the, I had to adapt probably just to the plays, learning the plays and the defensive schemes. Everything else was, was pretty, much, pretty much the same for me. Coach Cariolo told me to come in and just be aggressive and play my basketball so I didn't have to change anything offensively or defensively. Mallet was ready for everything, with one condition, to win. I accept, uh, you know, whatever role coach wants me to be in. And, and different teams and different coaches, different systems have different roles for each player. You know, so here I just, I just want to win. You know, it, it doesn't matter if I, if I average two points a game. If we win, I'm cool with it. You know, I just want teams to know that, you know, he, he's a winner and he will do whatever it takes to win. Of course, arriving during the season means being able to adapt yourself, as Law confirmed. It's been an adjustment. I mean, just in the middle of the season, trying to learn the system, learn my teammates. Um, but I mean, I, it's a great coaching staff. My teammates have been great helping me. And um, it's been a lot of fun, man. I, I'm playing in, in top 16. These are important games every week. And um, not, I'm not asked to do a lot of scoring and, and, and carry the scoring load, but I'm asked to, to just run a team and put guys in situations just to score. And then when the opportunity presents itself, score. I mean, it is fun. It's fun, and, and I'm enjoying it. There is one thing that can help, playing beside a colleague. So, you know, when I'm, when I'm in with another point guard, I think it's easier for, for us to read each other because, like, we know where everybody's supposed to be. He knows where I like it. I know where he would like the ball. So I think that, in that sense, it's easier on me for if, I'm, if I need to score. So I, I think I like, I like playing with, with, with two point guards. Older than you, find the right point guard evergreen key of every team. Only the greens of Panthenaikos can already smile in Group G. Their only doubt regards first or second place. Only EA7 Emporio Armani Milan cannot smile. Even winning next week, the Italians will reach either Panthenaikos or Unix Kazan. But with both, they lost the matchup. Still, the group gave us two exciting games. One between Fenerbahce Ulker and Kazan probably was one of the most beautiful, uncertain, surprising games of the season. Up by 13 points after 30 minutes, following the best Lynn Greer of the season, the Russians were very, very close to qualifying. With the Roku Ukic, Boyan Bogdanovic and Marko Tomas, Spakia's team came back. In the last minute, only the overtime could give hope and Ukic invented the best way to realize it. Then Gaspar Vidmar, Bogdanovic and the final free throws gave an unbelievable plus seven. But it's not over yet. They must win in Milan and hope on a Panathinaikos victory in Kazan. In Athens, Milan played probably his best road game of the season, pushed on by a fantastic Omar Cook, 12 assists and an efficient front court. 41 points with the big guys. Coach Scariolo's team bowed out of the Euroleague with great dignity. He's only 28, but if you talk to him, it's like talking to an experienced, intelligent veteran. 
is Rocco Ukic, a guy who remembers the advice of his older teammates from his formative years. When I was young, it was Dino Raja, who was a great player, and he played with me when I was a 17 year old kid. So, you know, he really teach me some work ethic, some, some things that only you can hear from somebody who was a great basketball player like Dino. And also, you know, even last year I played with Sharas Jasikevicius, who is, who is one of the best European players ever. And also, he, he, I learned from, from him some, some other things. Through the years, he's altered his playing style. A lot has changed since his first EuroLeague. When I was playing in Barcelona, I was backup point guard. We have Navarro, who is one of the best scorers in European history. In a, in a game, so you don't need point guard who's gonna score 10, 15 points. After those years, the change. Now three seasons, averaging double digits. Uh, in Rome or here, you know, I need to score more. I'm more a leader of the team, so I have ball more in my hand. Using all your talent. By the way, which is your best move? My floater. Uh, I like to shoot floaters. I developed that shot when I was in the NBA because I couldn't really finish on the rim because everybody was so athletic. So in the first 10 games I got blocked a lot so I had to, I, I had to come up with something uh, special for that and I uh, tried to use floaters from the left and from the right and that really become a part of my game and I, I really like, uh, like to keep on developing and, uh, you know, be even more successful and got even better percentage from that shot. And it's not only a team question. What about the center you're playing with? Some big guys, they want to roll. They can roll really well, so you have to use them under the basket. Some guys can are better on a pop, so you have to use them on a short corner or some different kind of pick and roll stuff. So you really have to know with who you're playing. Try to change just the style of the game a little bit toward the guys you are on a court with. Especially the big guys, because cooperation with the big guys and point guard is really important for any team. So you really, be, you, you really need to try to be focused on them. OK, Rocco, tell us the truth. Where do you need or want to improve most? Lots of people tell I should have more assist, but I agree with that in some part, but in the same time, uh, assists don't really depend on you only. It's only depend on is the guy going to make shot or no. So if your team is not playing in a great shape in that time, it's very hard to make assist. Or if, you know, like, it's, it's, really, it's really not just one person's job. It seems you're trying to achieve something else. What I'm trying to do, I really try to have the great attitude every game, come with lots of energy, and you know, just play from my heart, you know, every game and not regret for anything. But you're still so young, there's still time to really improve. I hope when you are like 31, 32, when you are still in a great shape and when you really mature in your head, your best years has come and you try to be a complete player in that period. A warning to all point guards, Rocco is 28, another three to four years to reach his best. We have two teams qualified from Group H to the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Basketball Playoffs. FC Barcelona Regal and Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv clinched their berth in the next round after two fascinating basketball battles against Benet Cantu and Jalgiris Kaunas. In Tel Aviv, David Blas' guys rallied from 17 points down. Sonny Weems led Kaunas to a 30-13 lead in the second quarter. But the home team came back with a 10-0 run to build an incredible sense of drama. Devin Smith scored from three-point range to give Maccabi a 61-54 lead. Then Weems again put Kaunas ahead, 66-65, in the closing minute. Keith Langford, with a couple of free throws and a layup, put Maccabi ahead by three. Then Weems missed the opportunity to tie the game twice. Barcelona is first, Maccabi second. Let's enjoy their game next week. Point guard Omar Cook worked his passing magic to become the B-Win MVP of Top 16 Week 5 in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague. 
Cook did what he does better than anyone in top 16 history, assist his teammates as Cook distributed 12 assists, tying his own single game top 16 record and his personal best in the EuroLeague. Cook also had eight points, two rebounds, and two steals for an index rating of 22, the best on any winning team this week. And now the top 16 week five podium. Bronze medal Lynn Greer. Okay, he didn't win. But how can we deny a bronze medal at least after a performance like this? 33 points in 41 minutes. With jumpers like Navarro's. Layups. Four triples from five. Baskets at the buzzer. Offense rebounds. Fantastic asses for the big men. A 43 ranking, but unluckily it wasn't enough. Silver medal, Rocco Ukic. What is talent? Many things put together. Rocco Ukic is a brilliant example of it. And he used all his talent, and not only, to tie the game with this fantastic invention. Silver medal, just because he tied. Gold medal, Raul Lopez. What is talent? Many things put together. Raul Lopez is a brilliant example of it. The same fantasy, courage, touch, balance of Rocco. But he won the game. It's just a question of circumstance. Golden circumstance. The top 10 fast break selection of week 5. Number 10. The long pass from Alejandro Abrines to Benny Rodriguez. Number 9. Andrei Kirilenko steals and dribbles, finding Alexei Shved for a spectacular dunk. Number 8. Mirsad Turkchan gets the rebound and drives the ball, then passing to Emir Prelzic, who asses a running Ogus Savas in the middle. Number 7. Jan Vujukas is fast. And after the fight under the board, to see and serve with a long pass, Mike Batiste for a dunk. Number 6. Sergio Rodriguez steals the ball, then asses masterfully JC Carroll for an undisturbed dunk. Number 5. After the rebound, the long pass from Jemon Lucas to Joshua Ship, inside to Luxa Andrich for a valuable layup. Number 4. Sasha Kaun blocks and runs. Kirilenko pass to Milos Teodosic. Again to count for the dunk. Number three. The long rebound goes to Omar Kuk, who dribbles, waiting for the magnificent bounce pass to Nicolo Melli and his powerful dunk. Number two. Two seconds left. After the free throw, a very special long pass by Alex Mumbrou for the first special buzzer score of his night by Raul Lopez. Number one, Doran Perkins for the rebound and the long pass to Gianluca Basile, bouncing for a train called Greg Brunner. Number three, Istanbul, Turkey. Final seconds of the third quarter. Lynn Greer of Unix takes a double pump shot from almost mid-court. Off the glass and in at the buzzer. Two, Istanbul, Turkey, final seconds of regulation. Emir Prelzic of Fenerbahce Ulker misses, but gets his own rebound and connects with Roko Ukic, who beats the buzzer with a one-handed jumper in the lane to send the game to overtime. Number one play of the week, Bilbao, Spain. 6.4 seconds to go, and Bilbao down by one. Raul Lopez of Hesclap BB gets the inbound pass, dribbles right, fakes, and takes the shot to win the game at the buzzer. Nothing but net. Olympiakos Galatasaray, game of the week on a hot Thursday. At an Abdi Epekci reaching boiling point, the Turkish team won one of the hardest battles of this EuroLeague, 
Octai Mamuti and his band won 78-77. After a thrilling overtime forced by Costas Lucas with an unbelievable 20 meter shot. Jamon Lucas was the hero. Facing his former team, he scored 17 points. Six in the overtime, including the go-ahead shot with 27 seconds left. He will be one of the keys also in Pereos. Just like Jakalakovic, both in offense with his playmaking and his three-pointers and in defense against Vasilis Panoulis, one of the most dangerous weapons of the EuroLeague. Olympiakos and Galatasaray face each other this year for the first time since 1960. We have waited 52 years to see Galatasaray in Piraeus again. Why should we miss this game?